moving on to the next question. This is going to deal with the rate of change and polynomials. So the height h in meters of a toy rocket above the ground can be modeled by the function ht equals negative 60 squared plus 30t, where t is in seconds. Two parts to this question. So we have to find the average rate of change from one second to five seconds. Then part b, we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at four seconds. So starting off with the average rate of change. So average rate of change, five seconds to one second. So what we have to do is we have to find the h, the height at five seconds, subtract the h at one second, all over five seconds minus one second, right? Now h of five, if we plug in five for the t values here, we'll actually end up getting zero for h. So what that means actually is that the rocket hits the ground at t equals five. Because if you actually graph this out, it's gonna look something like this. So it's gonna start at a height of zero, right? That's gonna be one of the intercepts. And then it's gonna hit the ground at time five. So that's why h of five is zero. So then we're gonna subtract h of one. Now if we plug in one for the t values here, we get an h value of 24. And then five minus one is just gonna simply be four, right? So negative 24 divided by four, that gives us negative six meters per second. So that's the average rate of change. So basically, at one second, it has a height of 24. So let's say like over here. So basically the average rate of change from time one to time five, if we draw a secant there, the slope of this secant line is gonna be negative six, right? And don't forget your units, meters per second, because the height, uh, it's in meters, and then the T is in seconds. Moving on to part B, we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at T equals four seconds. So a bunch of different ways to find the instantaneous rate of change. We already went over that in the rate of change chapter following interval method, preceding interval method, uh, centered interval method. Let's use the difference quotient though in this one. It's the toughest one and it's the one that will give us the exact rate of change. So instantaneous rate of change, just in general is what? It's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? That is the difference quotient. Well, in our specific case, we're not dealing with f, we're actually dealing with h of t, but this h here and this h are different. They represent different things. So what I'm gonna do actually, is I'm just gonna change the variables here and I'm gonna let, uh, instead of the h here, I'm gonna let this be f of t. All right, so I'm gonna have f here, and then instead of x, we'll have a t plus h, just so you're not getting confused with the h over here and the h over here and the difference quotient, which is different. So this will give us the general instantaneous rate of change at any t value. And then once we have that expression, we could plug in t equals four and then get the instantaneous rate of change. So first we have to find f of t plus h. And the way we do that is we plug in t plus h for all of the t values. So we'll have negative six t plus h squared plus 30 times t plus h. And when you expand everything, so you FOIL this out, bring the 30 in the brackets, the final expression would be negative 60 squared minus 12th minus 6h squared plus 30t plus 30h. And you can't simplify that anymore, unfortunately. There's no other like terms. So this part here, f of t plus h, would be all of that written out. So uh, negative 6t squared minus 12th minus 6h squared plus 30t plus 30h. All right, so I'm gonna erase all this here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the value of f of t. And f of t is just the original equation that we have, so negative 6t squared plus 30t. And that's still gonna be all over h. 
Well, when we bring this negative inside the bracket, we'll have positive 60 squared minus 30t. And then what's going to happen is this negative 60 squared, this positive 60 squared will cancel out. And then this positive 30t and this negative 30t will cancel out as well. So we'll just be left with negative 12th minus 6h squared plus 30h. Then what we can do is we can factor out an h from the numerator. We'll be left with negative 12t minus 6h plus 30. And that will be all over h. H is cancel out. And then we can plug in zero for h, right? We got rid of that h in the denominator. Plug in zero for h. This goes towards zero. So our general instantaneous rate of change expression is going to be negative 12t plus 30. And now we can find the instantaneous rate of change at any t value. And we could just plug it in here. Well, we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at a t value of 4 seconds. So if we plug in 4 for t here, negative 12 times 4 gives us negative 48 plus 30. That would give us negative 18 meters per second. Right? So that is the speed at which the rocket is traveling at 4 seconds. And the negative just means that it is going down. So if we were to draw this, show this on a diagram, looks something like that hits the ground at five seconds. So at four seconds is going to be around there, right? So instantaneous rate of change is basically the slope of the tangent. So if we draw a tangent at that t value of four for this uh, equation, the slope of that tangent is going to be negative 18, right? So the speed of the rocket at that t value of four seconds is uh, negative 18 meters per second. And again, the negative just means that it is going down. If you're finding the instantaneous rate of change, let's say uh, one second. So if we plugged in one here, we'd get negative 12 times one plus 30. That would give us positive 18, right? And that makes sense because the rocket is going up at that time. So positive instantaneous rate of change means that the object is going up. A negative instantaneous rate of change means the object is going down.